for you to constantly win, 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 when this voice over here, the real you, is saying, get the fuck out of here. Go. You're nobody. You've always been nobody. And it's true. People don't hear that. That's a true voice. That's the real reality of David Goggins at 24 years old. It's not a false reality. And then you had to create another voice over here that is saying you're better than that other voice. And you're in the freezing cold water that both voices don't want to be in. But you win. And it goes from the water to the studying, to the running, to losing weight, to how you eat, to how you function as a man. Every day of your life, you're winning these battles. And then I have normal people who only have one voice. They never created the second voice. The winning voice is the second voice. They have a, one voice. And that's just, I'm a piece of shit. And that's all they hear. And then they judge people like me who are out here trying to be better. It's something that I can never really, it's a frustrating thing for me. Cause I know, I know the majority of people. I know what goes on in the brain cause I studied the mind more than almost more than you. Cause I wasn't, I'm a practitioner. So for you to be a piece of shit and come out of that, you don't just come out of it. You spend decades studying your mind in the human mind on how it functions in good environments, bad environments, stressful environments, patient environments. You studied all because you had to put all this together to create the mind to become successful. So I had to, it was like, God bless me with this brain. I had to create a mind. And so in doing so, I figured out every piece of shit human being in the world because that's what I was going off of for myself. So I know why you go on Instagram. I know why you, because you just have the time. You have the time because you don't want to put that time into bettering oneself. So I know why I'm misunderstood. I'm misunderstood by people who have plenty of time on their hands to misunderstand me because they are exactly where I once was, which is a low life, lazy piece of shit. And it's the harsh reality of people who troll you, who go after you. They have nothing better to do with their lives. It's not some after school special. It's the truth by once was that way. I know where it all comes from. That's why it's frustrating to me now because I'm not so frustrated at the fact that I'm being trolled. I'm frustrated by the fact that you don't have the courage, the courage to try to be somebody better than what you're not. And that's the frustrating part. Most people live their whole lives without ever contemplating what it means to be great. They put all the greats on a pedestal, but think of themselves as mere mortals. And that's exactly why greatness eludes them. They turn it into some untouchable plane, impossible for almost anybody to reach. And it never even crosses their mind to aim for it. No matter what I'm doing or which arena I'm engaging in, I will always aim for greatness because I know that we are all mere mortals and greatness is possible for anyone and everyone if they are willing to seek it out in their own soul. In godless terms, greatness is a state of letting go of all your faults and imperfections, scavenging every last bit of strength and energy and putting it to, f to use to excel at whatever you set your mind to. Even if some motherfucker out there told you it was impossible, it is a feeling pursued by those rare souls willing to extend themselves beyond reason and pay the cost. In the late 1950s, Captain Joseph Kittinger was a pilot in the Air Force tapped for experimental aviation and skydiving duty in New Mexico. He wasn't a household name. In fact, hardly anybody knew the first thing about him until August 16, 1960, when he donned a red duct tape pressure suit and boarded an open-sided gondola tethered to an onion-shaped helium balloon. He flew that rig nearly 20 miles high until he reached the thin atmospheric line where everything goes 
from blue to black. He traveled to a place where the horizon did not exist. He was above and beyond all previously known limitations. Suspended at 102,800 feet, he unclipped his harness and stepped into space. His free fall lasted nearly five minutes. His maximum velocity was 614 miles per hour. He plummeted over 80,000 vertical feet before his primary chute opened. This was no Red Bull sponsored party. It wasn't a television show. Kittinger wasn't an entertainer. He was an explorer, a seeker of a new realm for the world. His flight and his jump helped make man's space flight possible. And also for himself. I don't jump to earth from outer space, but I know that atmospheric line between blue and black. It is the glimmer of greatness that runs right through the human soul. We all have it. Most of us will never see it because to get there requires a willingness to extend yourself to the limit without any guarantee of success. Then again, success is just another mile marker on the journey. Landing the jump and walking away while lighting a cigarette as if it were a typical day on the job made Kittinger look cool. But it didn't make him great. His willingness to do it in the first place, knowing that the chances of failure were high and everything it cost him made him great. It wasn't a stunt to garner fame or publicity. It was merely an attempt to see what was humanly possible, just as words can be redefined. Never doubt that we can redefine ourselves. It can feel impossible at times because we live in a world filled with arbitrary boundaries and fixed social lines that are as thick as the walls around a fortress. Worse, we allow those walls to limit us in too many ways. The brainwashing starts early and it starts at home. The people we grow up with and the environments we grow up in define who we think we are and what we think life is all about. When you're young, you can only know what you see. And if all you are ever exposed to are lazy people content with mediocrity or who convince you of your own worthlessness, greatness will remain a fantasy. If you live in the ghetto or in a dying industrial or farming town where buildings are boarded up, addiction runs rampant, and the schools are a mess that will factor into the possibilities others envision for you and you envision for yourself. But even privileged people can feel shackled by their circumstances. The vast majority of parents don't know what greatness looks like, so they are ill-equipped and afraid to encourage big dreams. They want their children to have security and don't want them to experience failure. That's how limited horizons get passed down from generation to generation. Should we really be surprised that almost everybody has a knack for twisting their story to work against themselves? I hear it all the time. Privileged kids say, I have too much so I cannot develop the skills that you have. The kid that came from nothing will tell me, I don't have enough. Therefore, I cannot develop the skills that you have. No matter where someone is in life, they never fail to confess why they can't get where they need to go. The minute they open their mouths, I see how limited their horizons are. And their sob stories come with the expectation that I will deliver a become great package to their front door. But that's not how it works. To this day, it is for me to become better mentally. Mm. How I look has just become a, like I have thousands, thousands, hundreds of thousands of miles on this body, running, pull-ups, push-ups, swimming, whatever you want to call it. This body is what it is now. It's from repetition. It's not from studying, you know, hey, if you hold a plank for this long, call that bull. I don't, I don't care about it. I just do it for my mind. Right. I want to continue to harden because that's the only thing I want. That's what I want. I want to have that mind ready for life. Identity is a trap that will keep you in blinders if you let it. Sometimes identity is what we are saddled with by society. Other times is a category we claim. It can be empowering to associate yourself with a particular culture, group job, or lifestyle. but. It can also be limiting. If you stick with your own too closely, you will be susceptible to groupthink and you may never learn who you really are or what you can accomplish. I know people who are so obsessed with landing a specific job that once they settled into that role, they clipped their own wings. 
They never moved on or attempted to try anything new, and that blocked them from evolving and developing new skills. Sometimes we are misled by others who categorize us based on what they perceive as our identity. When I met with Navy recruiters, several tried to steer me away from SEAL training and into a different opportunity because I didn't fit the mold. I was overweight, my ASVAB scores were low, and there was my skin color. Remember, I was only the 36th Black Navy SEAL. The recruiters weren't trying to hurt me, and I don't believe they were racist. They honestly thought they were helping me by presenting more realistic options. Usually, however, we mislead ourselves. Those of us who are struggling with our self-worth, like I was as a child, often build identities around the very things that haunt us the most. Not because we want to, but because subconsciously we are convinced that is how everyone else sees us. You cannot allow what someone else may or may not think about you or the issues you're dealing with to stop your progress. My environment and my history made me over anxious and stressed out. The color of my skin made me a mark. I was prejudged and vulnerable at almost every turn and it was my job to defy all of that. No matter how troubled or hopeless or sheltered your environment is, it is your job, your obligation, your duty, and your responsibility to yourself to find the blue to black line, that glimmer buried in your soul and seek greatness. Nobody can show you that glimmer. You must do the work to discover it on your own. There are no prerequisites to becoming great. You could be raised by a pack of wolves. You could be homeless and illiterate at 30 years old and graduate from Harvard at 40. You could be one of the most accomplished mother in the country and still be hungrier and work harder than everybody else you know as you attempt to conquer a new field. And it all starts with a commitment to looking beyond your known world, beyond your street, town, state, or nationality, beyond culture and identity. Only then can true self-exploration begin. After that comes the real work. Fighting those demons every morning and all day long is maddening because they only ever want to break you down. They don't encourage you or make you feel good about yourself or your long odds as you fight through all the toxic mold and crust that is self, hate, doubt, and loneliness. They want to limit you. They want you to surrender and retreat back to what you know. They want you to quit before you get to pliability, where the sacrifice, hard work, and isolation that felt so heavy for so long become your haven, where after struggling to visualize greatness for years, it is effortless. That's when momentum will gather like an updraft and send you airborne and spiraling toward the outer limits of your known world. It's time to level up and seek out that blue to black line, the line that separates good from great. It is within each one of us. You have to remind yourself, we all have a story. We've all, all of us have gone through very hard times. But when we're, when we're in a hard time, our mind has a way of forgetting what all we've overcome. Mm -hmm. I have a way of taking one second when I want to quit and saying, okay, you endured this. So I look at my life and how I came up as the ultimate training ground mm -hmm. versus most people look at it as why, woe is me, God, right. why, exactly. why? I had to flip this upside down and say, hey, on a second, God was training me to be one of the baddest men on the planet. Sure. That's how, he, this right. was this was my journey because those things beat me, but they didn't kill me. Not and I was able to work around them and That's figure right. out ways through it. So when I was in the worst time of my life in Hell Week, I looked at everybody and said, I'm the most trained person here. I've gone through more mental torture than any of you all can even fathom. So I'm looking at the baddest people on the planet. I'm looking at them like this. You guys can't hold a stick. So I started looking at verses like, I don't belong here, versus like, I might be the baddest person to ever come here. Who could have pulled this off? Who could have been given a sewer to live in, in their mind, and say, okay, at birth, I'm gonna put you in the worst place on the planet Earth, and let me see if you can go to the top of the mountain with nothing but just hard work, grit, and figuring it out and not putting yourself back in the dungeon every time something got hard. 
So that's what became wow. my daily voice was, you really are the baddest person on right. the planet. 